This episode of Del Marva Life is brought to you by the Berlin Chamber of Commerce. Nestled in the heart of Worcester County, just a short drive from anywhere on Del Marva, you turn a few corners and there it is, America's coolest small town, Berlin, Maryland. Today we are dedicating this hour to celebrating this Del Marva treasure and if you've ever been, you know the town is chock full of treasures from some of the neatest shops on Del Marva to the most unique events you have ever heard of. Uh, bathtub races, anyone? <laughs> Berlin truly has something for everyone. And if you haven't had the pleasure of visiting, we're going to give you a dozens of reasons why you need to get there. Welcome to the debut of Del Marva Life Small Town Series. We are so excited to show you some of the treasures you can find in Berlin. And on top of that, there is no shortage of fun either. But first, we would like to welcome this wonderful crew that has joined us for today's show for Berlin. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. The Cheer Center from uh, from Long Neck. Thank you for being here. Love it. Yeah. Now we all know that Berlin is very, very cool. And the rest of America quickly learned that back in 2014 when the town won Budget Travel Magazine's America's Coolest Small Town Contest. Berlin beat out 14 other finalists with 28% of the votes. Words like spectacular and a must-see were used to describe Berlin. And the people of Berlin proudly displayed the fact that the town had won that designation, and rightfully so. And even though that was uh, back in 2014, I think that uh, it's still... Still cool. It is still cool. Still Remains cool, cool today. Yes, we does. will always refer to it as America's coolest small coolest town. small town, you're mm -hmm. right. And it seems like Hollywood knew how cool Berlin was well before the coolest town designation. 1999, much of the movie Runaway Bride starring Julia Roberts filmed in Berlin. If you watch the movie, you'll probably recognize Berlin's main street, the famous Atlantic Hotel. I think uh, they called it Hail Maryland in the movie. Yes, they did. Carol and I uh, lived in Berlin for uh, a few years. I lived there at the time, as a matter of fact, on Burley Street. And uh, there was while they were filming, uh, Carol actually ran into Julia Roberts. She said that Richard Gere walked by, but he wasn't very friendly. So, Aww. but I think one of my most favorite memories of all time out of Berlin is my son, who is now married and has his own son, uh, playing in a mud puddle in his diaper in the front yard, <laughs> and yes, I have it on video, and I'm just waiting for the perfect moment to pull it out. I think today would have been the perfect today moment. Today would have been a good but, day. Uh, and, and, and speaking of movies, it was 2002, scenes from the film Tuck Everlasting were also shot in Berlin, and again, it was very neat to see the big screen places that you know and recognize and pass every day. I remember when they filmed that movie because they trucked in tons of dirt and actually filled the streets of Berlin with dirt to show, to make it look like a turn a, a, a town Turnsome, back yeah. in the turn of the century. I, yeah, yeah, yeah right. I love that movie. Now, you can't talk about Berlin without mentioning the famous bathtub races. It's a 30-year tradition. People turn whatever they can find into a bathtub <laughs> and race down the streets of Berlin. And while it's all fun and games, there are certain rules that need to be followed. For instance, bathtubs must hold a minimum of two gallons of water. By the way, this year's bathtub races, the 30th annual, take place uh, June 14th from 5 to 8 p.m. They're held downtown, right there on Main Street. We'll have more details as we get closer to the date. And then a few months after that, in September, the best of the best in fiddling make their way to Berlin for the annual Fiddler's Convention. We have had many of the performers in the Fiddler's Convention on the Mid-South audio stage in Historic Studio D, including this father and son duo, Mickey and Keegan Justice, as a matter of fact. They both picked up a couple of awards in last year's Fiddler's Convention. This year's Fiddler's Convention on the schedule for September 20th through the 22nd from 10 to 5 in downtown Berlin. We, of course, will remind you again as we get closer to the date. Now, let's fast forward a few months to Christmas. There are not too many places that you can actually catch a ride in a horse-drawn carriage. But Berlin is one of them. The horses are Clyde and Ace. <laughs> They help put that special touch on the Christmas season to top it off. The carriage rides are free. These carriage rides in Berlin add such a unique touch to the holiday season, and they really 
draw a lot of visitors to Berlin. And if you want to see small town pride during the Christmas season, the Berlin Christmas Parade is a must see. Thousands of people coming out to see local schools, fire departments and choirs and some incredible floats. The Berlin Christmas Parade is approaching its 50th year, a true testament to its success. All right, so do you have any memories from Berlin? We really would like to see what you have to say. And some fascinating stories that have come out of there. Please post them on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think I'm still making memories in Berlin. We go down there every year for the Fiddlers uh, yeah. contest convention. That is so it, much fun. And they block down, they uh, block, block off, off Main the streets Street. for a lot of the events that yeah. they have. And it's just such a small town feel. And this is wonderful. Now, like we said, if you have any memories from Berlin, we'd love to read about them. Just post them to our Delmarva Life Facebook page. What do you say we introduce you to some of the core businesses in Berlin that make it stand out? Starting with one of the newer businesses to call Berlin home, the Greyhound. This indie bookstore was already full of family history long before the first book hit a shelf. And it's become one of the more popular spots you'll find on Main Street. We learn its history and why so many people are bucking technology and seeking to get local authors works in their hot little hands. Another Berlin business is celebrating 25 years on Main Street. Its name captures the essence of America's coolest small town in America, but what you'll find here is everything that everyone wants to find when shopping for the latest trends. We will visit Victorian Charm. And a few doors down the street, you'll find a shop that has been a Berlin fixture for more than 40 years. The treasure chest is known for its fine jewelry, but you'll find so much more no matter if you want to spend a little or a lot. Downtown Berlin is a place where you should stay for a while, and World of Toys is where you should play for a while. I'm here at the Iconic Shop to show you what's in store. And let the fun continue when we stop by Uncle John's Soap Shop. Don't let the name fool you. There is so much more than just soap. 1025 WBOC's, uh, WBOC's Corey Phoebus is going to show us, and he's getting his hands dirty to show us what goes into making these one-of-a-kind products. We are just getting started with this hour-long celebration of Berlin. We'll kick this party into high gear right after the break. Stay with us. You know, we have met some amazing local authors through the years. Just last week, Daniel P.T. Thomas talked about his book, The Come Here from Wales to Shinkatee Island. Not long before that, we met author Ruby Dillon, who wrote about weight loss in The Losers. Uh, back in February, author B.B. Champ turned us on to her book, Third Haven, A Novel of Deceit. The list just goes on and on. Now, all of these books and more from local authors can be found at an indie bookstore that just opened in Berlin. It's called The Greyhound. And as I found out, in the few short months it's been open, the Greyhound has proven it's just what Berlin needed. This building has been in Susan Ayers Wimbrose family for generations. My great-great-grandfather built it in 1895. But it wasn't until 2018 that Susan opened up an indie bookstore in what was a hat shop many years ago. Where we are sitting, where the bookstore is, was my great aunt's millinery shop. She went to Wanamaker's, learned how to make hats, and came back here, and it was her millinery shop. The hats are long gone, but the walls are stacked floor to ceiling with adventures, romance, history, fantasies, anything and everything that will spark the imagination. Books have always held a special place in Susan's life, starting as a young girl. Reading was such a joy for me, and my uh, books became my friends. And so I have read ferociously throughout the years. But it wasn't until Susan retired from owning and working in funeral homes that she wrote her first book, Death is My Life, a collection of unique and somewhat bizarre stories from her first career. I took stories and I, I turned them a little bit. There's a creative uh, turn and twist on them, changed the names to protect the innocent, of course, and I wrote about them. And then the first part of the book is nonfiction. My mother was killed in a bizarre crime. And I wanted to educate the public on what happens to the family, the nucleus of a family, when a murder takes place in in a family. Opening the Greyhound has been a labor of love for Susan and her husband and an education for some customers. An indie bookstore is independent, and that means I am carrying a lot of authors, 
um, who have self-published. They're independent. A lot of people don't know what an indie bookstore means or indie in itself. I had a lady come in the other day and she asked me if, if I was from Indiana. And there are many independent authors in the area. We have a lot of retirees in the area um, on Delmarva. And um, so from Delaware, Eastern Shore of Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia, and I carry those. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're retired from Washington, New York, New Jersey, Baltimore, and so we are trying to promote them. That doesn't mean you won't find mainstream titles here. We have uh, New York Times bestsellers, um, and uh, so we're, we're carrying them all, but uh, we are focused on the indie. The Greyhound carries children's books, too, which are found in the Aesop's Fables room. Children can come in to browse and sample books from local independent authors, as well as some of the best sellers for young readers. Many local authors take part in author signings on Saturdays from noon to three. Susan says the Greyhound bookstore is thriving, and she thinks it's because the pendulum is swinging back to books on paper. I have every day um, someone will walk in and thank us for opening an indie bookstore and they tried to read on the tablet and some still do, but they want that tactile feel and they want a book in their hands and they want to touch and, and feel and smell the book. So it's, it's nice that these little indie bookstores have popped up, up all over uh, the nation and they are pretty hot right now and that's wonderful. For Susan, the Greyhound represents two dreams that have come true, the dream to write a book and the dream to own an indie bookstore. It all kind of fell into place and uh, yeah, it's been a great, great ride. We are having a blast here promoting the arts. And you may have noticed some of the artwork that hangs on the walls at the Greyhound. Susan says she also carries local artwork for purchase. And Jimmy, the name Greyhound comes from Susan and her husband's love of Greyhound dogs, specifically those have been, that have been rescued from the dog racing industry. Uh, they work to raise public awareness to the need for good homes for Greyhounds throughout the country. Now that's pretty cool. That is cool. That is pretty cool. It wasn't that long ago that Main Street in Berlin didn't have but a couple of stores. Things really started to pick up for the small town in the late 90s after the movie Runaway Bride was filmed there. Many shops have come and gone since that time, but one thing has been there for 25 years, Victorian charm. And like fine wine, it's gotten better with age. I got the opportunity to see for myself. When Debbie Freeney opened Victorian Charm in 1994, there wasn't a lot to choose from when it came to shopping in Berlin. I think the treasure chest is about the only thing that's still here mm -hmm. um, from then. Back then, Debbie was trying to fill a void. Because when I first opened, my thought was, around here you had to go to Salisbury for everything. And I really didn't like to have to go all that way just to get something. So I was trying to, to open a store that would have everything you would need and you could come in, get a present, get a card, get it wrapped, and be on your way. But today, Victorian Charm has evolved into something else altogether. It's totally different. Um, you know, I have found over the years that just listening to the customers and getting to know your customers, we've evolved into what they want to see. Um, when I first opened, I had tons of greeting cards, um, paper products, gifts, a lot of toiletries. You can still find some of those items, but you'll also find quality handbags, jewelry, clothing and accessories, a vast assortment of the latest unique gifts. We really try and, and find what's new and stay with trends. Debbie says right now monograms are big, so Victorian Charm offers custom embroidering on many items. Another big seller is Brighton. We sell, and we have a lot of customers that come in and say that we have probably the biggest selection that they've seen. Um, so we carry all the handbags, the jewelry, um, accessories that they have. Other popular brands you'll find here, Vera Bradley and Spartina, and something new to Victorian Charm, sleepwear and loungewear. Which we're really excited because same thing, we're, we're trying to get sleepwear for everybody. We have. Um, every price range, you know, we have everything from UGG robes, you know, to inexpensive and reasonably priced pajamas. So 
Um, and we've gotten, so far, really good response from it. There's also plenty to choose from for baby. Where we do embroidery, we do birth announcements um, on blankets or on animals and things. And something you won't find anywhere else are these Made in Berlin book pillows. My daughter and I actually make our book pillows. So we design the pocket and we make the pillow and we personalize it. Um, if you tell us what you want and we pretty much will make it happen. But, and that's been fun for us because we've, it's kind of brought our personal, you know, made in Berlin, made a few blocks from here actually. Mm -hmm. um, so we do that a lot and um, the response is really good because you don't find that anywhere else because it's something that we've come up with. Victorian Charm is now surrounded by several shops making downtown Berlin a destination for visitors when they come to the beach. In fact, the store recently expanded. We did. We kind of keep pushing at the four walls. You know, it, it's a limited space, but we closed for the month of January and we reopened and we have, I think, more space. We painted, we moved cabinets around, we redesigned the whole store and it, it, it's a more open feel. We, we're really happy with it. Now that 25 years have passed since Debbie first opened the doors to Victorian Charm, she can hardly believe she's still here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I expected. I don't know that I remember thinking about stores when I opened that how in the world do they last that long? And sometimes I wonder, I still don't know how you last that long. You know, I think it's just listening to customers, you know, and, and making, we make a friends with all of our customers. We really do. We like talking to them and we'll help anybody find anything in town. You know, it doesn't have to be something we sell. We help people. Um, we just like people. And that's certainly important. Now, we mentioned the filming of the movie Runaway Bride back in the late 90s. Debbie says Victorian Charm was used as the bridal shop in that movie. Take a stroll down Main Street in historic downtown Berlin, and it's easy to see why so many people make their way just to browse through the shops. But long before the streets were lined with trendy cafes and boutiques, the treasure chest was the place to go for a wide selection of fine and unique jewelry. And it still is. Lisa recently stopped by to see what kinds of treasure you might find at the treasure chest and what's new. The town of Berlin has certainly changed over the years to what it is today, but one thing that has stood the test of time is the treasure chest on Main Street. And just like the town of Berlin has evolved over the years, so has the treasure chest. I'm here with the owner, Terry Sexton, and you've been here since 1977. 1977, 42 years. Wow. Proud, proud to be here for that long. Yeah, and, and, and the store has changed as well, hasn't it? Yes, it mm -hmm. sure has. Mm -hmm. So um, people know you for your jewelry, but over the past couple of years, you've diversified a little bit, offering some gifts? Yes, we sure have. We've brought in um, several things. We have some new wine glasses and, and champagne glasses. We have a air purifier, Lambergere. We have some Sid Dickens plaques that are very popular. And we've listened to what the customers have wanted and, and we've tried to accommodate what other people in town don't have. Right, right, because you guys really work together. All the shops in Berlin work together. We sure do. To give every uh, shopper an experience and not really compete against each right. other. And I think that the visitors to town notice that and they really appreciate it. Right, well, one thing the treasure chest has always been known for is fine jewelry and you have beautiful jewelry here. Thank you very much. We do have a wonderful selection of diamonds and gemstones and a lot to choose from. But you also have costume jewelry. We sure do. We've mm -hmm. brought in some costume jewelry if you need something to go just with that outfit or something special. It's not going to cost you a lot of money. Mm -hmm. We brought in a couple nice lines of costume jewelry. And some of the some of it has a coastal flair. It sure does. We have um, items from Hawaii that are very fairly inexpensive in sterling. But we also have a uh, such a variety of things that it's not just necessarily for dress up, but it can be for play as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you try to try to uh, get items that are made in the USA? Yes, we're, we're proud to cover, uh, carry a lot of items that are made in the USA because we just feel like that puts a positive spin on things. I noticed that you have some jewelry that's made from bamboo. We sure do. It's a line I picked up when I was in Atlanta and it's all laser cut in California and the earrings are $15 each, so it makes a great gift or self-purchase, um, and they're again made in the United States. Yeah, and you say self-purchase. You know, we talk about gifts all the time, but it's okay to treat yourself, isn't it? Absolutely. We work hard, and it's it's 
absolutely fine to treat yourself. Okay, let's talk about trends. Jewelry, just like anything else, there's all kinds of trends. What's hot right now? Right now, yellow gold. Yellow gold is coming back very strong, and that's why one of the costume lines I bought does a lot in the yellow color. Um, we've got cases stocked full of yellow gold, but that's the trend is coming back to yellow. Yeah, yeah, and if you can't decide, your staff, they know their jewelry. They do, and we're happy to, to offer suggestions to help you find that special gift, or once again, that self-purchase. Yeah. Yeah, and, and in addition to that, you do jewelry repair? We do jewelry repair, we put in watch batteries, we have watch bands, um, things that people don't realize that we do. And Terry says the treasure chest plans to remain a fixture in America's coolest small town for many years to come. And that's some beautiful merchandise. Oh, and the treasure chest is a member of the Independent Jewelers Organization. That's an elite group that only selects jewelers with the highest level of professionalism and ethical standards. The Marble Life Small Town series brings us today to the beautiful town of Berlin. We're taking some time to focus on fun. Stepping into a world full of toys, now that sounds like a dream, doesn't it? One business owner turned that dream into reality by opening the world of toys. Yeah, and if there is one person on our team who likes to play, it's Del Marva Life, Sydney Whitfield. She's outside the world of toys now. Guys, when it comes to work, my motto is all play, no work, don't tell the bosses. So World of Toys was the perfect place for me to stop by. It's a family owned store and as you're about to see, its unique selection is what makes it stand out as a small town favorite. If you head over to Exciting Berlin and you happen to have some kiddos with you, you may want to make a stop at World of Toys. Owner Olga Kajenikova says it's exactly what its name suggests, and more. A World of Toys is an independent toy store, family-owned. Um, it's a lot of educational toys, games, a lot of arts and crafts, science projects, puzzles. If you come to us with the question about like, age, like certain age, certain interest, we can direct you where the product located, what's new in the store, uh, how popular it is, um, why it's popular. Olga says her inspiration to start the shop came from her own daughter. Uh, we started almost seven years ago. Uh, my daughter was one. We were shopping online for her toys, but it was hard to buy something without seeing the product. So, and I was, I was thinking about opening my own business and uh, I thought the toy store was a great idea. She says she invites visitors to Berlin to come try out some toys on the game table. Uh, with the game table, we can show the customers different product, different age group, uh, how to, when, when people actually playing little games with us, they get an idea and they can see if they like it or not. And as your little ones anticipate summer break, Olga says she has some toys that will have your kids running outside to play all season long, like they should be. We already put our summer stuff on the floor. We have um, nice trucks and toys by Playmobil and Melissa and Doug. We have uh, a lot of outdoor toys. Um, we have games, we have um, aerobie. Um, Frisbees, we have lawn darts, baseball bats, so it um, makes the kids go outside and play. Um, one of the products um, we've been very successful with uh, Surfer Dudes. It's a uh, little piece that you throw in the ocean, it catches the wave and comes right, ba right back to you. It was one of the Num number one selling item last year for us, and we will do well with that this year also. So when you plan your visit to Berlin, Olga says she hopes you love the town just as much as she does, because there's always something fun to do. It's uh, very friendly for, uh, we have great relationship between the merchants. We have a lot of events in town. One of the events that's coming up, it's Jazz and Blues Festivals. For that event, the streets would be closed, so it's a lot of uh, different music um, in different parts of town. It brings a lot of families into town. So for us, um, kids, they will see our bright sign on the street and they will run to the store to play with some games and pick a new toy for themselves. 
it's a lot of very good product featured in our store. So I, I would like you to come to our store and experience that yourself and, uh, and learn about Berlin and learn about um, what Berlin has to offer to everybody. World of Toys is located at 115 North Main Street in Berlin. And Lisa, you stopped by and had lots of fun for yourself, right? I sure did. And one thing you won't find in that store, video games. Because oh. Olga likes to have toys that help spark the imagination. So that's pretty cool. We already know that Berlin is the coolest small town, but it has another distinction. The antique capital of the Eastern Shore and with three giant stores filled with thousands of treasures from hundreds of vendors, it's no wonder. We stopped by one of those stores and found out how easy it is to go in and get lost in yesteryear. Bill Alton says selling antiques was a family business, but he got a late start after his dream of opening an art gallery after retirement didn't quite work out. We hit a nice little recession and drove me out of the art business, but my parents had an antique store and they were still going strong. So I said, I think I might open an antique store. And that one store turned into three. I've taken over my parents' store and opened two more here in the downtown area of Berlin itself. All three stores are within walking distance of each other in downtown Berlin. Pitt Street Antiques, Town Center Antiques, and Uptown Antiques. Bill says it was a way to really capture the diversity the stores offer. That diversity comes from the vendors who have booths in each of the stores. They're dealers of their own rank. They go out all over Delmarva, starting with Grandmom's Attic to uh, flea markets, yard sales, estate sales, auctions, online and in person. And um, they just go out all over the place and find things. And they put their treasures in here, waiting for someone to come along and saying, this is the treasure I've been looking for. The antiques are there, but there's also so much more. We have branched beyond antiques. Bill says most of the vendors carry some sort of nautical themed items from cast iron mermaids to signs and wall art. All kinds of glassware, all kinds of treasures, coins. He says people are picking up pieces and giving them the popular worn look using paint that can also be found there. We have a distributor of uh, Dixie Belle chalk paint in one of our stores and she gives lessons here about once or twice a month now for people learning to um, take um, an old piece of furniture and change it into the color they want and you know their artwork and their artistic talents go right to it, and the next thing you know, they have a treasure to put in their house. And then there are the collectibles. Bill says if you can collect it, they have it. Wedding planners come here and get all kinds of things to, to um, put on their tables, like mason jars or some form of vase that they'll display all the flowers or trivets that they have on the table to make it unique to their wedding. Some treasures are unique to the Eastern Shore. Carvers have been on the Eastern Shore forever, and that's a trade that goes up and down the coast, but here is a nice pocket that people from all over the world actually come and get. Oyster cans, you know, it wasn't more than 10 or 15 years ago. We used to go out and shoot them in the uh, backyard, but now people are collecting them, and it's not trivial dollars that they're attaining. These cans are actually... Some of them are in the thousands of dollars now. Visitors to any of the three stores can take a piece of Berlin home with them. I started with t-shirts and sweatshirts and have uh, grown the business into all kinds of um, souvenirs that people can take home. And of course I have the sweatshirts and hats and t-shirts, but we also have like knives that have Berlin on it, oyster knives that have Berlin on it, cutting boards that people can use in their kitchens. Bill says he really enjoys spending his days in the stores, seeing what other people find, but he also enjoys getting out and being on the hunt himself. I've seen a lot of Del Marva that normally I would have never seen or, or traveled to if it wasn't for that. So I, I enjoy it. I find it very rewarding as my second career. <laughs> 
And we mentioned how Berlin is the antique capital of the eastern shore. Bill is creating an antique trail that people can follow that takes them from Berlin throughout Delmarva to hit on some of the best antique shops around. Again, a way Berlin is working with other small business owners yeah. to just bring everyone here. Yeah. Soaps, bath bombs, and beard bombs? Jimmy sounds like he might want to pay close attention to this one. Yeah. You can find it all at Uncle John's Soap Shop in Berlin. We sent 1025 WBOC's Corey Phoebus to Uncle John's to get his hands dirty, clean, whatever. Anyway, he's going to show us how these neat products are actually made. Uncle John's Soap Shop. Such a simple name. However, this local business of Berlin is anything but simple. With an array of useful home products, Uncle John's Soap Shop is a cornucopia of fragrant treasures and trinkets that all started with John, his wife, and an idea. So my wife was researching laundry soap recipes online. She wanted me to make our laundry soap so we could save a few bucks, maybe go a little greener. And uh, so I, I followed one of her recipes, hated it, trashed it, started from scratch with my own same same contents same uh ingredients and uh success you know we had a perfect recipe the second time and went with it as a patron of uncle john's soap shop i tend to gravitate toward their beard products when a man has a beard like john's you trust his opinion when it comes to beard care but how did we go from sweet skin softening soap to beard products for furry faces as i was creating the business and expanding the business you know it's normal to add body scrubs and bath salts and things like that and most people think of women's products and uh, a lot of my friends had beards and asked if I could make them beard products. They were looking for beard oils first and then they started talking about balms and some of the guys wanted to grow their mustache out and you know style it so mustache wax was the next natural progression. John's shop isn't only a beautiful display of everything we could use for our daily routines, it's also a bit of a laboratory. Most of the consumable products are made right here in the store. But we, we sell bath bombs, uh, bubble baths, bath soaking salts, laundry soap, accessories, all kinds of accessories, nail brushes to sponges to loofahs. Well, since you say that most of the products in the store are made in the store, I gotta be a part of the business. How do I make soap? Well, let's get you started. So we started, I started you out a little bit ahead of time. Okay. I mixed the lye with the water and I mixed some of our solid oils and heated them to liquid. Okay. Now you're going to add the last of the liquid oil to that. All right. How much do I need of this? Just pour the whole thing in? Two pounds, 8.5 ounces. Oh, okay. And you have a scale set up here. Yep. I feel like a chemist already. <laughs> You're gonna take your fragrance. Today we're making black tie fragrance, which is a musk, kind of a manly yeah, that's nice. scent. Yeah, cool. And you're gonna do four ounces of that. Four ounces, and this is a one ounce cup or a half? That is correct. Okay. 30 milliliters, one ounce. So four of these? Yep. Stay down. Stay down, it gets a little, <laughs> gets a little messy. <laughs> yeah, it does. All right. Now, everything's incorporated. Yeah. You can take this with your left hand. Okay. And you're gonna, Moderate speed, go ahead and pour it in over here. While I'm mixing? Yep. Okay. Is that a good speed? A little bit faster. There you go. Good? Yep. Man, and look at that it. thicken right up there. Yep, it'll start to emulsify. All right, I think you're just about there. All right. So you, now you're gonna take that bowl and you're gonna pour into that mold. All right. And you wanna go, if you can, from the side this side? Yeah, because when it starts to pour, it kind of spreads out a little bit as it pours the stream. Okay. So go ahead and pour with a little bit of speed. There you go. A little bit faster. Like that? Yep. You got it. And it's loose enough that it should all fill in the cavities just fine. Look, guys, I'm a soap maker. <laughs> all right. And this whole thing should fit, right? Absolutely. Well, I did add like six extra ounces of oil. So. That's all right. All right. We won't want to move the mold around too much. Last little bit. Yep. And then we wait for that to harden, I'm assuming. Absolutely. How long does that take? That is, we usually let it sit at least 24 hours in the mold. Um, so sometime tomorrow morning, I'll go ahead and take it out of the mold and peel the plastic off the sides and let it sit for probably a couple more hours. We'll cut it into bars 
and then the bars will sit for another day or two before I wrap them. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you for showing me this. Absolutely. Glad to have you aboard. Berlin is compiled of beautiful local businesses, businesses that rely on each other and rely on you to shop locally. So, yeah, honestly, I think if if your town is important enough to you, you'll shop local. We all get along great around here. We're always helping each other out. I think I'm going to have to go spend an afternoon there someday. I think that you should get you some beard wax or uh -huh. balm yeah. or whatever. Get some, get some oil. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds nice. Look for a new uh, customer real soon. Berlin is your destination for jazz and blues, wine and brews. Next weekend, Berlin Jazz and Blues Wine and Brews Festival, Saturday, May 4th. You'll enjoy two stages of live music, great food, shopping, art in America's coolest small town. The Rain or Shine event is Saturday, May 4th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. in downtown Berlin. The entertainment is free, but fine wine tasting is $35 in advance, $40 at the door. We have all that information on our website. WRDE and 107.1 The Duck are proud sponsors of the event.